This footage shows my client Brian being arrested at a West Virginia traffic stop for not rolling down his window the entire way. Hello, go ahead and roll your window down for me. It's, it's all right. Go ahead and roll your window down for me. What do you need it down for? Because huh? I said roll the window down and you're going to jail. Why are you being like that? Roll the window down now. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was arresting a f***ing guy for being a guy sucker. After I posted this footage to YouTube almost two years ago, the criminal charges were dropped, the officer was fired, and a federal civil rights lawsuit was filed. Well, final update here. We just settled this lawsuit. Why did it settle? And for how much? Let's recap the footage. On January 31st, 2022, Brian Beckett was traveling home from work driving north on West Virginia Route 19 in Mount Hope, West Virginia. It was around 5.45 p.m. He ended up getting pulled over for speeding, allegedly, by Mount Hope Police Department Officer Aaron Shrewsbury. Instead of just getting a speeding ticket or even a warning, Mr. Beckett ended up being pulled out of his car and arrested for obstructing an officer, disorderly conduct, speeding, and reckless driving. Mr. Beckett was driving home from an industrial work site in a nearby county. He's not a criminal. He was just trying to drive down the road and get home. Luckily for him, he had a dash cam recording, which appears to show that he was driving safely. It doesn't indicate his speed, but this isn't about his speeding ticket. Officer Shrewsbury would subsequently swear under oath in the criminal complaint that he filed with the court authorizing Mr. Beckett's arrest that not only did he radar Mr. Beckett's speeding, but that, quote, as I was catching up to the vehicle, I noticed the vehicle weaving through traffic recklessly, but that I was able to pull behind the vehicle and get it stopped. Here is the client's dash cam, which survived, thankfully, which saved his rear end here. Take a look at it yourself and see if it shows him driving recklessly.
So fortunately, the dash cam paid for itself here. It showed that there was no reckless driving. But the crazy thing that happened here was Officer Shrewsbury just immediately arrested Mr. Beckett for obstruction for not rolling his window down all the way. And he never bothered to ask Mr. Beckett for his license, registration, proof of insurance, or even his name. He just demanded that the window be rolled down all the way, not even providing a reason, just because, just because he demanded it. It's all right. Go ahead and roll your window down for me. What do you need it down for? Because uh, I said, roll the window down and you're in jail. Why are you being like that? Roll the window down now. I'm not going to. All right, go ahead and step up the door for me. Look back here. Sorry, man, I was arrested guy for being a goddamn sucker. I love it. Then he immediately removed him from the car and arrested him. The officer never even identified himself. The reason he pulled him over or explained any legitimate reason that he required the window to be rolled all the way down. In the subsequent criminal complaint, no allegation was made or even charged that it is illegal in West Virginia to not roll one's window down completely during a traffic stop. He was merely just charged with obstruction. West Virginia courts have held that when done in an orderly manner, merely questioning or remonstrating with an officer while he or she is performing his or her duty does not ordinarily constitute the offense of obstructing an officer. At no point did Mr. Beckett refuse to participate in that traffic stop that was being conducted by Officer Shrewsbury. He rolled down the window partially. He was clearly visible through the non-tinted glass. His hands were visible and non-threatening. He hadn't refused to provide his license, registration, or proof of insurance. He hadn't refused to identify himself or to do any act that he was required by law to perform. And I'm still aware of no West Virginia law, nor was one identified in this case, requiring motorists who are subjected to traffic stops in West Virginia to roll their windows completely down as a matter of routine. Officer Shrewsbury also charged Brian with disorderly conduct under West Virginia law. Why? Well, he said that as I walked him back to my vehicle, Mr. Beckett said, this was bullshit. I then informed Mr. Beckett to stop cussing and placed him inside my vehicle. So he charged him with disorderly conduct. But under West Virginia's disorderly conduct statute, no probable cause would exist for a warrantless arrest for disorderly conduct by saying this was bullshit. First of all, if that were possible, it would be a First Amendment violation. As the West Virginia Supreme Court warned law enforcement way back in 1988, the freedom of individuals verbally to oppose or challenge police action without thereby risking arrest is one of the principal characteristics by which we distinguish a free nation from a police state. There was also a West Virginia Supreme Court case, Maston versus Wagner, which held specifically that the West Virginia disorderly conduct statute, while potentially criminalizing some profane language under some circumstances, it has to be in public in front of other third persons who complain, who are actually offended. It does not criminalize profane language used by a citizen directed towards law enforcement during their interaction with law enforcement. And then you have the Supreme, U.S. Supreme Court cases, like Cone versus California in 1971, Lewis versus City of New Orleans 1974, that free speech, however offensive or controversial to sensitive, virgin-eared police officers, is afforded a high level of First Amendment protection. After, not before, after I posted the original YouTube video and the public saw it, as usual, then the criminal charges were dismissed. Ultimately, the officer was fired, from what I understand. One other interesting here, thing here that I pointed out in the earlier video is that this police officer was completely uncredible to begin with because he had been previously decertified as a police officer as I explained in the prior video. The politicians and the prosecutors behind the scenes of this particular police officer, Aaron Shrewsbury, really should explain to their public why this police officer is allowed to victimize citizens in the first place. Given the fact that he had previously lost his certification to be a police officer in West Virginia while working at the Fayette County Sheriff's Office 
for, quote, dishonesty slash willful falsification of information. No, unfortunately, I'm not making that up. That's right, this same police officer who filed false and incorrect charges against Mr. Beckett, as we've just explained, has somehow in the past managed to screw up his job as a police officer so badly that he lost his certification to be a police officer for lying as a police officer. Truly unbelievable. And how scary is that that this man, Brian, was being prosecuted for multiple misdemeanors, which together, I mean, could be years in jail, technically, when theoretically, if he did anything, all right, let's just say he was speeding, but he was charged with obstructing an officer. He was charged with disorderly conduct. He was charged with reckless driving on top of speeding. And he spent like 24 hours in jail for speeding, if he was speeding, just because one bad cop decided to show him what he can do to punish him. How often did this happen before where people did not have dash cams in their vehicle? Now, fortunately, once exposed to the public, eventually the prosecutor did the right thing. The town did the right thing. But it was only exposure to the public, exposure to you, that made that happen. And at the end of the day, the town did the right thing in settling this case. So we filed the lawsuit, and very early on in the process, they wanted to settle. They came to the table. My client came to the table, and we reached an agreement. In the civil lawsuit, all you can do is agree on an amount of money if they will pay an amount of money. And they did agree to pay a fair amount in this case. The ultimate amount that we ended up agreeing on in this case was $62,500. Why that amount? Well, it was a search and seizure case, a false arrest case. There was no use of force. You have to compare to prior verdicts, prior settlements that involve similar facts. And there are not a whole lot of them. A lot of the value of these cases are attorney's fees. So at the end of the day, we believed it was a fair amount. And if they wanted to go forward, yeah, of course, we could potentially get a lot more. But that's what your government should do is settle these things when they're legitimate earlier on so that the taxpayers don't have to pay way more in the end. So that's the final update in this case. And I know some people want to hear like it was, you know, $10 trillion settlement in these cases, but that's just not the reality. It's always a possibility, a very, very good possibility that you lose these and not only do you get nothing, but you're out all the expenses that you had. It's always a great possibility that even if you won a jury trial, especially in West Virginia, a jury gives you like 500 bucks or something. So when the government pays you know, in excess of $25,000 or so, you know it's likely a very legitimate case. So if you like following along with these cases, please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. And videos like this keep the government honest. Our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank <laughs> you.